welcome to another model kit review of uh, Bandai's Gundam RG series. This is MS06F Zaku Mark II. Uh, this is the most classic enemy from Gundam. <clears throat> and uh, much like the, uh, the most classic Gundam that I picked up in the other video, I picked it for the sole purpose of crossovers for the uh, the the uh, the Hero Battle series in Japan. I forgot, I forgot the name of it. Uh, it has Ultraman, Gundam, and Kamen Rider. Sometimes occasionally cameoing Sentai or Space Show, Gavan, or some of the other Toku heroes, but mostly the three Kamen Rider, Gundam, and, and um, Ultraman. Mostly in video games, comics, chibi stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, I don't care for robots that much, except for you know, crossover stuff, so I decided to pick up the most original two robots I could get. And uh, these are... Uh, the other one was like a 30th anniversary one, but this one doesn't have that stamp on it, even though it's the same line of stuff, so the, it's very complex. So much so that I actually broke this one while building it. Oops. Uh, yeah, there are the, the two pins which are really, really small. Now, there are action figure versions of these, uh, Robot Spirits, which is the, you know, the figout's equivalent for robots and mechs and stuff. But I think the scale was a little bit different to these, similar to these, but I think it was a little bit... Um, Slightly bigger, maybe? Uh, the thing about these robot things is um, I don't know how big they are, so I decided to get the most standard scale with this boss, which sort of roughly looks like something I need. Um, I think I ended up with something a little bit too small compared to SH Figarts, uh, but still good enough for crossover, because uh, in, in the crossovers, Kamprad are the same size as Gundam for some reason, so they're not exactly the same, the correct scale anyway. Um, but these guys will look a little bit smaller than Ultraman, so that's going to be a bit annoying. But yes, uh, very, very complex in details. On this side of the box shows you all different paint jobs, uh, poses that you can do. And um, in and the bottom tray box also has some details on it. We'll put more light on this now. Do, do, do. You can see, uh, yeah, advertising the different stuff, you can, different versions of this particular model that you can get. This is robot. And uh, yeah, this guy in there is really complex. And speaking of complex, you get a uh, very filled to the brim decal sheet. You got all these sheets on and stuff on it. All this stuff on it. And different numbers, every letter of the alphabet, chrome effects, because you can't really paint chrome properly, so I'm definitely going to be using some of these decals eventually to add details to my figure. Uh, at least I'm going to obviously name my figure 318 as the number because my channel right so that's that and um, just for example this one came with almost similar amount of frames not as slightly less than the other Gundam but it still came with ditch this much plastic almost for a figure this small so I'm gonna put him down you stand there come on stand up and just look at this tiny figure and you had to have all this frame which probably doubled the amount of plastic uh, in the figure itself, so you go away for a sec. And in this Russian booklet is a book because the de there's quite a lot of details and steps to build this. Uh, not as many pages as the uh, classic Gundam figure, the RX-78, but um, still pretty filled till then. Um, and they also have with uh, alternate parts, including the leg and the helmet, so you can build slightly different versions of your model. Now, let's just show you alternate parts. I think that's during the build. Let's see. There should be a page about the head somewhere. So, leg, leg, leg. So, there's all the alternate parts of the legs. Come on. Oh, right. Right here. Um, yeah. So you hey you can do different ranks and stuff depending on what decals. The decals come with all different ranks you can get, and um, I guess I put the highest rank <laughs> on mine. And different helmet bits right there. Hmm. So with this body, you do get some extra stuff. For example, you have a uh, the alternate headpiece there. Different things go on top of him. Uh, alternate top head, which is just a dome shape if you don't want to attach anything to the top of his head. Uh, alternate back pieces for the back of his legs that I didn't use. And uh, he has a pilot as well, which is a bit more generic than the other one. It's just, yeah, it looks like a woman, maybe. Could be a guy or a woman. It's too small to tell. 
Uh, they, I said woman first because it kind of looked like he, uh, the, the figure had vest, but um, it's padded enough that it could just be the suit. So, uh, gender generic pilot, I guess. He's got his power axe, and uh, this, this permanently has a little peg sticking out to stick into the hand so he can hold it easier. Obviously, this could do with a bit of painting, but because uh, it's just a single piece of plastic. But that's fine, still looks good. That's a piece of weapon. And um, we have the, his main sort of uh, rifle slash gun. It's got a little scope on it on the side, which uh, does have a piece of transparent plastic in there. So that's he comes with the uh, signature gun right there. There's also a movable handlebar right here, so his other hand can hold it. And of course, the handle has a little peg that pops out to stick into the hand. It's got an axe right there, a little peg, single plastic piece of plastic, so single color, and um, <coughs> it's one of those pieces that definitely needs a bit of paint to make it look good, but that's fine. And um, we have a bazooka here. Bazooka rocket launcher right there. Again, has a little peg there, has a little handle for the other hand to hold it. Also has a bit of transparent plastic right there for where the scope is, so that's cool. Uh, it gives it the illusion of his, it, that it's an actual scope. So a pretty cool thing. Uh, the, the, the his signature gun also has a tiny, tiny scope. With a little bit of a transparent glass plastic piece stuck in there. He uh, also has some extra hands to come with him. Um, He's got um, a uh, relaxed open hand for holding the uh, bazooka or gun. He uh, has uh, the fist hands that are just fists, not for holding, just for literally just punching. So for both hands he's got the fist. And um, he actually has a proper gun holding hand here to uh, hold the guns a bit better. Right, articulation. So, uh, he does have a double neck joint, but it's quite stiff. And uh, the eye in there can rotate, that little red speck of an eye in there. Uh, but uh, you're going to have to remove the top of the head to do any of that movement. So, but at least I can do that. It's a little bit uh, finicky. Uh, can't help but kind of wish that um, there would be like a little hole that you can put a screwdriver in and turn his eye. That will make it easier, but it uh, doesn't have that. Oh well. Uh, his shoulder pad comes all the way down like that. This big chunky shoulder pad, which is useful for articulation and posing and stuff. Uh, arm comes all the way out because of a hinge inside the body. These uh, exhaust ports also move just a little bit. So uh, this shoulder pad just sort of rotates on the spot, doesn't really move that much. Uh, does it come down? Yes, actually no, yes it does. It's got the same arm, so this can get out of the way too. So, full rotation here, up, down, uh, full rotation here. This has got a uh, double elbow joint, and when you're moving the arm, you can see there's a lot of other stuff moving around, like this, for example. That's cool. Uh, fingers you got the thumb, and the first finger, and the last three, and they have a single joint and a ball peg that pegs into the ha uh, the actual hand. Hands on a uh, ball peg, this one's got a swiveling joint, so that moves around a lot. And there's actually a, a few loose pieces here um, that are just held in place because the arms plug the hands plugged in. If you pull the hand off, they will fall off, um, but they're there be to allow more articulation. So. Uh, little door opens up, there's a seat inside for the uh, pilot, so this one's kind of hard to reach to close, crap. <sighs> Gonna have to get like a pin or something to close it back up, because I can't close it with my fingernails. Uh, torso's on a little ball peg, moves around a lot. These shoulder pad, you know, these um, skirt pieces, they move around a little bit here and there. On little different ball pegs and stuff, all of them, so we just have like leg articulation. And leg goes up. When you move the leg like this, you can see the whole robot thing that kind of moves. That's cool. Oh, leg fell off. <laughs> Come on, plug back in. And uh, notice that uh, this is one of the pieces. These two pieces I broke. Uh, you're supposed to attach these two thin pieces, and there'll be a spring that goes across. And with the uh, all of these little um, green bits gone there. Uh, it would have been much better if this entire piece was just like a soft green rubbery piece. But nope. Uh, so this is what we got. I broke it. It's impossible to fix. 
there are no spare parts for it for such a fragile bit it's like the smallest piece of plastic I can imagine on these kits and it broke so great lucky me so uh, this robot's gonna be constantly missing bits oh well uh, foot goes up down sideways sideways toe goes up just a little bit you can see this foot's in three sections so it does have quite a lot of movement it goes down quite a bit as well so there we are pretty good articulation this robot, uh, the building process is also quite complicated, just like the other uh, RX-78, was it? Was it 78? No, yeah, 78 to Gundam, the main hero Gundam, the main classic Gundam. Uh, pretty much just as complicated. The central skeleton structure is pretty similar as well. I think it might be the same. Uh, but once this is completed, the whole thing feels a lot more sturdy, because they're, they're less finicky parts. The designs are a lot simpler than the other robots, so it tends to hold itself quite well together at least when I was posing it nothing really fell off apart from the skirt pieces fell off once much much easier to pose than the other robot however like I said there is one bit that's particularly hard to build and and that's the little spring loaded uh, connector joints on the legs there which I broke one uh, there's also the one on the helmet and the one on his uh, his stomach area those pipes uh, those have a hard plastic like just molded in the shape of the body because they, they don't need to move whereas the ones on the legs need to move so um, this tiny tiny pin broke and there's no replacements so uh, I recommend you have to be a bit more careful and a bit more advanced uh, before trying to build one of these but once it's built and put together it does feel all right in the in the hands when you're messing around with him and posing him so and he also kind of has more accessories, he has more hands and, and more bits to go with him. There are also alternate designs that you can do with him to make him look like different versions of the robot. So you have quite a few of these, they can all look a little bit different. Um, there are also many color versions of this. There are red versions, blue versions for different ranks and stuff, but they're all pretty much the same mold. So you can definitely build a very colorful army with these. Maybe one has a green arm but a blue, blue body or red legs or something. Just you can combine different different ones together and with the decal uh, details or having different numbers and, and lots of different bits that you can customize this is pretty fun army building experience if you like robot armies so I do recommend this but uh, only after you've been building models for a while and as you can see here there's really no need to paint this uh, they have different shades of green plastic um, used in this model kit which is why it gets a little bit finicky and complex uh, they could have done with just a single green color to make the whole thing a bit easier but then people who can't paint well are going to have a hard time trying to you know, make it look more unique and stuff so yeah pretty pretty decent thing uh, not the best but uh, not the easiest thing to do but uh, it does look good at the end